Pepperoni pizza and he didn't tell me. I've uh, <laughs> stolen it away. <laughs> One way to carry spares. Yeah. Right, so this weekend is Grand Euro. We're in Wales and I'm going to ask you first question. How do you pronounce this? Schwalbe. Schwalbe. Yeah. Schwalbe. So, Schwalbe. Schwalbe? Schwalbe. Nice and gently. God, you're, you're German. Schwalbe. Schwalbe. Yeah. Schwalbe. Basically, British people can't pronounce it properly. That's what we've learned. So, I'm with, insert name from one of you, Schwalbe today uh it kindly invited me along this year to grand Giro. and to start what we're going to do is grant is going to fit some new very special tires to my bike i've got the special ones right special logos team logos pro ones not pro ones but pro ones <laughs> so we're going to fit some new tires to the bike for grand Giro, and i'm probably i reckon i might use these for badlands yeah pretty solid setup so these are super race which are the lightest carcass we do but they are a tubeless tire i run these on most of my bikes and i'm quite heavy and i don't have problems with them but i, I like these also you can see you've got the transparent skin so it's actually a clear rubber on the side wall so rather than being like a colored tan wall that's actually the tires carcass you see with these ones. Huh. so well, what grant's going to do as well is he's going to give five tubeless tire setup tips T T S T. <laughs> we go with that. T T S T. Five tips on how to set up your tubeless tyres. Simple, easy, and well. Basically, today is the first day of Grind Euro. Uh, they're doing a prologue ride. Quite lucky that Shimano are here, Schwalbe are here, Sturker are here. Loads of cool brands are here. But Grant kindly invited me this year, which is very lovely of him. And uh, he's also taped up my hand. Give me some extra support. A bit uncomfortable and a bit sore recently. But the, the deal of this is basically we're going to do five tips to help you set up your tyres. Oh, swingy. Really, really well and really, really simply with someone who's very good at it. Preparation is key. Make your life easier. With number one. So we're actually going to be changing the valves on this setup as well to Chris's reserve valves. Uh, but we'll pop the tyre off just we'll retape it and do everything from the start just so you can see the process because nine times out of ten when people are setting up tubeless and they have issues with the tire catching and inflating a little bit extra rim tape normally solves the problem how many well. layers would you do i would start with two everyone personally. says two, everyone says two yeah. to me um sometimes you just get a bit of a feel when the tire is just already a tight fit that you don't need anymore but if the tire is kind of falling on the tire extra rim tape is just gonna make that gap that tolerance tighter it just means the tire catches easier pretty much every tuber setup i do you can pump up with a hand pump you won't need a compressor or anything so it just means trail side flats you can reinflate with either a plug or whatever but you can just use your hand pump rather than co2s or you know having to carry you know a, a, a bottle or anything like that yeah co2 is the devil right yeah it's just a lot of waste with the with the with the, bot, the actual canister as well they're not very uh environmentally friendly also certain um canisters the cold will, will dry out your sealant as well this is the pump you need it's our new little sos pump so it's about the same size as you yeah it's pretty small <laughs> and uh that's it fully extended a little lock-on valve at the top and it can switch between Prester and schrader you just undo the top and just swap the guts out mm -hmm. between the two it's pretty neat it just sits on the frame it's nice and light uh, or in a back pocket it's, it's discreet good. i've got one mounted on mine i didn't even see it it's yeah. that discreet yeah interesting what are these rubber balls grant so these compound balls are our little tester to show people that compounds aren't just about grip <laughs> compounds are also about the dampening properties of the ride and yeah. how the knobble of the tyre can deform. So if we take our firmest compound, which is our fastest compound, which is called Speed, the red one, and if we take the purple Ultra Soft, we'll do a little test. I'll drop them at the same height and basically what you'll see is how much the purple ball won't bounce essentially. So left hand side, my left hand side, 
is the speed red and then the purple on the right. Okay. You can kind of feel like it feels a bit sort of stickier almost. But the idea behind that is just to show you how the deformation of the nobbles shows how much they grip and with the slower return they'll have better grip with that as well as dampening the ride. So first thing you're doing is removing the old valves, taking the old tyres off and there's nothing wrong with these tyres, the Thunderbirds, but so I used these out in Austria at the uh, GCN event. Great when it was not perfectly dry. When it was perfectly dry they felt slippy but it's a fast tyre. Yeah, it's quite a shallow tread. So when you've got like loose, dry ground, it can only dig so far through it with yeah. a very shallow tread, but they're really fast. I like these on my cross country bike and I'll even run them into sort of early winter personally. Pushing them a little bit maybe, but I think they're one of my favorite tires. They're a great tire. My reason for wanting to change them over is purely uh, a confidence thing, I would say, with uh, my wrists at the moment. Uh, I would like to have a bit more extra grip in my wrists. That's it really. They're really fun though. They're fast, they are really fast. Taking the tire off, popped it off the bib, off the bib, off the bead. You got a tip for getting it off the bead easily? Certain tires are a bit tighter than others, but just a simple thing with tire levers, always use your weight and push down. It's always harder to pull up, so use your weight as an advantage. Just slip out. It just makes life a little easier. Like I said earlier, preparation's key. So I'm actually gonna change this rim tape to our rim tape. What I'd recommend with obviously rim tape widths vary. Two, three mil wider than the IRD of the rim. Just measure it if you're unsure what it is, but it's normally written on the rim. What does IRD stand for? Internal rim diameter. A wider rim, the benefits you get from it is just more stability in the tire's sidewall, basically. So if you think you stand with your feet close together, you're less stable, a bit more wobbly. If you stand with your feet wider, it's a much more stable platform. So wider, wider rims will give you a more stable tire. Some of the kind of hidden maintenance with tubeless is where you can see where I've pulled the tape back, the old tape, and you can see how sealant is ingressed under it and over time will lift tape and you can see how it's got through even there and this is a this isn't even a, this is like one wrap and a little bit right yeah, this is quite thick tape to be fair so it's yeah. probably in some cases as thick as two laps of other tapes out there mm. um, but it will ingress and it will eventually lift and then the sealing of the tire goes so you know tape's gone when you start getting sealant come through the nipples of the wheel so we're getting rid of this old tape and we're putting some very lovely new tape on you shrunk my bike. So, this is just this brake cleaner, where an alcohol cleaner will work. Yeah. It comes back to that whole preparation is key. So we're just cleaning the rim before we pop the new rim tape on. And this is, as you say, just making sure the whole interior is clean. No muck in it, no, no sealing. That sort of thing. The old tape will leave some residue, but if it's glue, the alcohol will just reactivate that glue anyway. So it'll just help stick things down. Why does it? Do, why does it reactivate it? Because it's a solvent. It breaks the glues down and it reactivates it. Oh, brings it back to life. It's like when you fit a tub. You like when you're gluing tubs. You kind of you do your first lap of it and then you reactivate it yeah. with uh, with alcohol and then you put your next layer on. Talking about rim tape, I'm going for a 32 mil two mil wider than the internal width of this it just gives a nice covering of it it's a nice width on that if you get a proper width covering with the tape it just helps the bead slip when you're mounting the tire as well when you start i always start opposite the valve so where there is the overlap it's furthest away from the joint the joint's furthest away from the valve that's a good tip a little tip i do it's just a future proofing thing so i just cut an angle in the tape so when you do need to remove it in future it's just a bit easier to find and peel off so we start opposite the valve so it's nice and easy with a red marker and then i'm just pulling tension into it whilst running my finger through just to make sure that the tape's right in the wheel well get the seal our tape's quite tough you can't really stretch it it kind of feels a bit like foil but it is plastic but pulling tension in you'll see how it just fits the profile of the rim as you're pulling it round 
but I just run my thumb through the centre just to make sure it's in the wheel well. And that way it sticks properly. See I'm overlapping the joint now. So that's one lap. I'll do two. And if you're unsure if it's tight enough, this is where it's always good to dry fit the tyre before you put sealant in, if you're unsure if it's first time doing it. Because the worst thing is if you realise, oh, it's still a bit baggy, you want a bit more tape to make it a bit of a tighter fit. If you've already got sealant, it just means you have to clean it, you're pulling a tyre off full of it. Just save yourself that effort if you're unsure. But I've done this quite a lot, so I'll know quite quickly the feel of it, if it'll work or not, basically. Really sorry that had a nice right angle in it. Which means if you ever need to peel it off, it's easy to find. Just keep the tension in it. And we're just pushing that through. In the middle. Some people will run a tie lever or something blunt just around the edges just to make sure it's seated properly. Mm. What we'll do now is what I, I put a puncture repair patch over where the valve will be. It just kind of acts as a bit of a gasket. So when you do pierce the tape, because it's under tension, it won't split. Or if it does split, it, you've still got somewhere for the valve to, to seat in that will that shouldn't leak. It just, it just improves the seal, basically, for the valve. That is a good tip. Nice and easy with these rims where the valve is, with the sticker. I'm just going to clean over where it will go just to make sure the patch adheres properly. So I'm just using our glueless puncture repair patches just for stamp. These are used on like inner tubes and everything. And I just use one of these. They're glueless because they're already sticky. Yeah, already pre -glued. There's not that there's no glue on them. They are actually, they do have glue on them. So, 199, if you're about, please, please. Gotta get it as central as possible. Um, anybody else just finished the prologue? Yeah. Come this way, mate. Would you like to have a little chat with me? Look off sharp. Okay. Anybody Get something like sharp and pokey. Be careful like with it. Just place. pop through where the valve hole is. And you'll see here, if I wiggle it around, you can see where the point's um, marking there. Just carefully, mind your thumb. Poke that through. Just re-stick it down. And then you're ready for your valves. So these aren't conventional valves, these are the reserve valves. This is wheels. Probably need to be a little bit more careful with these ones when pushing them through because the valve core tips are a little different on these ones. Just use the valve core, push through, and then just carefully again use a cloth or if you want to be careful, and use something in between the valve. Just pop it through, and then we'll just pop the Green washer on. So with valve washers when you tighten them up, you don't want to do it up too tight. So you can see the rubber, red rubber washer here. You want that to deform to fit the rim profile. Mm. If you overdo it, it can over pinch, it can crease it and it can create a bit of a leak. So you want these tight, but only really finger tight. But that's the rim prepped and ready to go. The reserve valves are slightly different because they, they're called Fillmore valves and how they work, as you can see, is when you push it up, see how that's how you get the air into them and then when you screw on the end bit on it, that kind of seats it on there and they seal up effectively. They're slightly different to other valves but any valve will, it, the same process works for any other valve basically. Special tyres. So these ones are just a little different with the, the logos being white, a bit of a throwback to some of our older tyres and graphics like that, but just signify that they're teeth tyres is what that's to do with. Check the tyre, just make sure, see the direction of the tread, we've got a rotation marker here, and then people get a bit divided on where they want to line it up with the logos. Uh, a lot of people will line the valve with um, the pressure settings, it's just a traditional thing. Personally, I run it between the W and a which is the middle of the middle of the logo that's how i so i'm the same with you on that or well, the other thing that i do which is dependent on the tire is that some of them have this this little tab on tubeless easy tab 
You call it a flag? You call it a flag, yeah. So that'll indicate, so in this case, it's a tubeless tyre, TLE. You get tube type tyres that will say tube only. But same, if I have these with some of the gravel and road tyres, I'll normally mark it up with that one, because then yeah. the other logos are They're all symmetrical. Exactly, that's exactly what I do. Got the valve lined up. So I'm just working from the drive side. We'll just work it around a thumb, see how tight it is. Might need tyre levers, but the beauty of tubeless, you can use a tyre lever without pinching it. One of the most valuable tools in the world is a good set of tyre levers. And these tyre levers are pretty damn good, to be fair. So it's quite a nice, tight, snug fit on it. I'm happy with two laps of tape being enough for that one to seal. Yeah. As Chris was saying, our tyre levers They've got a nice wide kind of spade edge to them, which is good. So it shouldn't damage anything when you're getting on. But they've also got a little third hand tool. So this little bit here, this pops out and that allows it to clip into the clincher of the rim. So rather than chasing the gap around the tire, you can put that in and then work the rest of it on with another tire lever. Chris's rims here are hookless. So they don't have the clincher shoulder on them. So these will fit on them, but they could pop off a little easier. So it's just something to be aware of if you have hookless rims. Hookless rims tend to be, they're more common now in off-road stuff, but we are starting to see it coming into road as well. It helps improve the profile of the tire by removing the shoulder. You don't kind of pinch the bead of the tire into yeah. the rim. So it helps improve stability of the side. Wall. Other side of the tire. Okay, something I do, another little tip, make your life easier. I'll sit with the wheel like this, hold it with the stomach. And you can use both hands now just to kind of feed the tire on. And where it gets to a tight point like here, you just make sure that the tire is right in the center of the wheel well, which is like the, the lowest point that makes the tire as slack as possible. With standard valves, I'd say it's quite easy to put sealant through the valve, but with these, they're a little bit more unique. I wouldn't want to clog them up too much. So you can put it through and it's you absolutely can. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you ever go to a show and you see reserve at a display stand, they'll have a sand timer with a valve in it and the sand goes through it fine every oh, really? time. Yeah. Uh, you can put it through the valve or whilst the tyre is slack like this, you can pour it in there. Uh, it's personal preference, right? Yeah, putting it through the valve is possibly a bit cleaner and neater. Um, I'm a bit old school and I normally put it in the side of the tyre. Obviously, you just choose your measurement. Um, you don't want to put too much sealant in because you'd just be carrying too much rotating weight, basically. I'd say between 60 and 100 mil in a mountain bike tyre, depending on the size. Because if you're if you get a puncture and 60 to 100 mil sealant doesn't seal it, mm. nothing will. So you're just carrying extra slop in your tyres needlessly. How much sealant, Grant, would you put in a road tyre? Say a 30 mil tyre. Between 30 and 60 mil. You know, 30 mil becoming a little bit more common now in sizing. Previously seen as quite big, but they I, I would be. Somewhere in the middle is always good. 60 is absolute max, um, but no less than 30. So that's our dock blue sealant. Uh, 500 mil bottle comes with a 60 mil sort of decanting bottle, and it also comes with a handy metal valve core remover. Which These are really useful. To just have. something you can put in your bag and carry with you, being that small. Trader or Presta, that's what that'll do. Chris's valves, you don't need one of these. So it's really important to shake the sealant. As you can see in here, you can see where it looks almost a bit like emulsion paint, a lot thicker. That's all the particulate in the sealant, and that's what will help clog up punctures, basically. So you need to give it a really good shake, turn it upside down, really move the sealant around. Careful not to spill any. And then what's quite handy, the little 60 mil bottles, they've got this little ridge on the edge of them. And what that does is it clicks into the big 500 mil bottle. Like that. I didn't know this. Just push the air out and then hold both so it doesn't go everywhere and just slowly fill the 60 mil bottle up. So that's pretty full. Turn it back up. It's a pretty much mess free way of doing it. I didn't know that. <laughs> Very clever. I'm just going to pop the sealant into the tyre. Just rolling with 60 mil. I think it'll be enough. 
that's that normally how much I'd put in. So then I'll rotate the sealant away from me. So now I can mount the tire without getting sealant all over me. Obviously earlier I was showing how you can lay the wheel down, but in this case, I'm just gonna do it because now the sealant's in it, I can't lay it flat. Holding the tire that end, use my knees a little bit this end, just feed the tire on. And the last bit you should just be able to just pop on like that. So the next thing obviously is to inflate the tire. You just want to make sure that the bead isn't exposing the valve head. You can see that. And also you can see when I'm squeezing the tire, the bubble's coming out, which is a good sign. It shows it's quite a good seal, tight seal. So this should pop up pretty easy. We'll try it with the track pump first and that should be enough. Now, if you could do it with a track pump, I will be impressed because I can never do it with a track pump. So I think the idea of this one is you kind of, with tuba setups, push that in charge it up and then it pops through for tube stuff so pop that onto the valve yeah and you can see size inflating first time with just a standard track pump nice and easy what would you say suggest to someone if they're having an issue getting the tire on the rim so there's a couple of things you can do so we have a product called easy fit which is an alkali based solution it comes in a nice little adapter with a sponge head that you just feed around the bead of the tire when the tire is not inflated and what that does it just allows the bead to slip on the, the rim into the into the clincher of the tire basically also with it being a liquid you can foam it up and that helps create a better seal yeah and with it being an alkali solution it'll evaporate so the beading shouldn't slip because using washing up liquid it's got lots of salts in it it's not very good it's quite corros cor corrosive for the rims so when inflating the tire we're just keeping an eye on the bead line here as you can see the line there disappears into the rim yeah that shows that the tire isn't fully seated yet if we just focus on this bit with a little bit more pressure you will see that line appear quite often with tubeless tires we'll get like a loud ping noise where it's seating it's pretty normal carbon rims can be pretty loud with it as well makes me jump yeah Ooh, like that. There you go. It's a satisfying noise though. You know it's working. It's definitely going up, right? Absolutely. You've got to be careful. You don't want to put too much pressure into, into seating tyres because too much time you could blow the tyre off the rim. And if you blow a tyre off the rim, the tyre's pretty much, it's not really safe because it's going to keep doing it basically. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do, we'll just pop the pump off for the moment. What you can do, just see how the bead's still not seated there. You can just do it with your hands. The bead's still not seated here. Just there is where it's dropped in, isn't it? Disappeared. So a little bit more pressure. Pop it out. Sometimes you can do it by hand. Sometimes it's a bit stubborn. Ooh. It's always good to give like a last inspection. Just see if there's any leaks of sealant. That's just where it's come out of the rim when I was mounting it. Yeah. But if you start seeing bubbling sealant, it's probably worth checking to see you know, if it's an older tire. There might be a hole in it and just the sealant's doing its job. But it's always good. Give the wheel a bit of a shake so the sealant gets a good covering of the inside of the tire. And that's it. Obviously you just check your pressures what you'd normally run tire size and rider weight applicable I'd, I'd run that so 235 higher volume tire if you're kind of in the 70s to 80 kilos you're going to be running you know no more than the kind of mid top end 20s personally i'm about 86 kilos i run my 2.35 cross country tires between 19 and 20 psi that's soft yeah, I like them a bit softer. See, the lower pressure you have, the better grip you're going to have, and comfort, but it is a balance and payoff of, you don't want them too soft because they could burp or you could bottom them out, but I like to think I'm quite a careful rider. I like to choose my lines carefully. I seem to get, I seem to get away with it. Uh, the rolling resistance side of things, like, it's, again, it's a bit of a, a playoff between 
people think firmer tyres will roll faster, but a firmer tyre won't grip as well, so you're having to put more power in to get the grip, so it's a bit of a play on. There is no one magic pressure, it's all very personal and subjective. It's such a personal thing at the end of the day. You, no, no one has an answer to what is right for everybody. We have a we have a useful tool on our website called the Pressure Prof. And it's a bit of a, a basic is guide. It with Dot, blue dot, dot blue. It is pretty much. Yeah, and the Tappy Chan, his mate as well. Yeah. And like the website, what we what you do is you just input some <laughs> basic details of tire size and width, rider weight, uh, also I think rim widths on something there, and it will give you an outline of what pressures you you should be running, or ideally, mm -hmm. is the plan. They look mega. Good to go. Look at that. I think Grant's got given a really good overview about how to do the process of setting your bike up with tubeless tyres. Super smooth, as he's already said, preparation is key on making it work well. If you have any more questions you'd like to ask Grant or Schwalbe in general, please put them in the comments and I will basically pester Grant until he responds and answers them and get you the answers as quick as I can. That looks mint. Looks odd right now, but we've got to do the other one. Back for round two. The white logo's on the hubs, isn't it? I like the like mountain bike frame with drop bars. Mountain bike frame with drop bars. Drop the post? No. Not Save yet. Them. Not yet. <laughs> I've just walked around co op for like an hour. Came out with a bag of notes. It's good though, right? <laughs>